Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to look at the subreddit r slash entitled parents where people tell us their stories of crazy mums and dads who think they're entitled just because they have kids. If you're new around here, please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video. But for now, let's sit back, relax and enjoy some Reddit stories. The whole beach wasn't enough. I recently travelled to a beach town to visit relatives. I'm there so often, quite a few people think I'm a local. Both locals and tourists are pretty good at respecting personal space and won't sit right next to or in front slash behind you. In my 20 plus years of making multiple visits per year, I have never had a problem with tourists. Until my most recent visit. I get to the beach early like at 8.30 a.m. and I set up my chair and umbrella. There are maybe five other families already set up for the day, so there's no one within a 100 foot radius of me. For the next hour and a half, I'm blissfully enjoying an audiobook and a handful of other people show up. The entire beach is still empty. All of a sudden, I feel a tap on my shoulder, thinking it was my relatives deciding to join me. Nope. It was an incredibly obese, trashy looking woman in her late 30s or early 40s, standing over me. Behind her was about 12 other people who appeared to have packed up their entire house and were lugging it through the sand. She's entitled parent. Excuse me, but you're in our spot. What spot? This is our spot. My family is staying at the hotel right over there and we've been sitting in this spot for the last four days. You need to move. No, I don't. I was here first. I said this is our spot. This whole stretch of beach is reserved for hotel guests only. Me, knowing that not a single hotel reserves spots or parts of the beach for guests. Okay, well, go get someone from the hotel to move me. If you can find someone, I'll gladly move. Well, there's no one working right now, so you're just going to have to believe me. There is literally miles of open beach. Pick a spot and enjoy your vacation. Entitled parent both yelling at me and her family. This lady has just ruined our vacation. We need to find a different spot. So, she and the rest of the family plop their stuff down literally 10 feet to the left of me, despite the entire beach still being open. For the next hour, I pretend to be asleep, listening to my audiobook, but instead, I'm listening to Entitled Parent. Every word out of her mouth is how much of a witch I am, how it was so inconvenient that she had to carry her stuff an extra 10 feet, etc. I was overjoyed when the lifeguard kicked her and the rest of the equally as trashy adults in her group off the beach for refusing to put out their cigarettes. Well, by the way she described her, she does kind of own the beach and us humans took it away from her because whales were there way before us, weren't they? Entitled mother, my girlfriend at the time's Anne, tries to ground me because her 26-year-old son and his 25-year-old wife missed curfew. Back before OP met his wife, he was dating a girl with… a unique aunt. I wouldn't say she was overly religious, but she had some strange puritanical values. I was about 29 at the time, and my ex about 27. Ex-girlfriend's mum is having a barbecue. It started around 2 o'clock in the afternoon and shortly after we arrived I had a beer. A single awful Bud Light or equally bad beer. Enough that I didn't even finish it. This will be important later. All my ex's family that's in town is there. Her mum, aunts, uncles, a few cousins and their spouses and dates, including her 26 year old cousin his mother, and his 25-year-old wife. The mother decides that 8pm is way past her bedtime and tells the kids it's time to go. They don't want to. She starts to argue, but I tell her it wouldn't be an issue if I dropped them off on the way home. Ten rolls around and the cousin starts to freak out. 
We need to leave now. Whatever. X says her goodbyes to her mom and the few people that are left, and we head out. We get into my car and I hit play on my iPod. Ben Fold's cover of Witches Aren't Anything comes on, which I enjoy, so I sing along while talking to my ex. The cousin and his wife in the back look uncomfortable, but they always look uncomfortable. I drop them off, even staying long enough to make sure they make it into the door, and me and the ex head home. The next day, my ex gets a call from her mother. I guess her aunt told her mom that I drove her kids home drunk while blasting filth in the car and got them home well past their curfew of 10pm. She demanded that I be banned from further events and honest to god wanted my mom's phone number so I could get the punishment I deserve. My ex's mom, not being insane, laughed at her sister-in-law and hung up the phone. She just called me to tell the aunt had it in for me. My ex then started to laugh and told me about when she had to live with them. Back when she was about 20, her parents went through a very nasty divorce. She was living at home and going to college. But since her parents were pretty poor to begin with, the house was sold and both could only afford single room apartments for the first couple of years. Her aunt offered to let her stay at the place while she finished school. They tried to give her that 10pm curfew after she moved in. The problem was that she worked selling phones until 10.30 at night. She couldn't afford college on scholarships and grants alone and didn't want to get too far into debt, so she worked close to full time while going to school full time. She was a hell of a salesman though and that job covered her tuition. Didn't matter to her aunt. As long as you live under my roof, you will obey my rules. So my ex moved out. She lived in her car for a few weeks until her next paycheck, when she could get a super bad studio apartment in the ghetto. Unfortunately, school, a full-time job, and dealing with the fallout from her parents' divorce was too much for her, and she dropped out. But she lived on her own and supported herself instead of living by her crazy aunt's rules. Things didn't work out, but I will never forget my ex doubled over in bed telling me this story as we laughed about how her aunt tried to get someone who was almost 30 grounded in a house we leased together. I kind of feel bad because they're, they're adults, but they're not like mentally adults. They've been like babied by this crazy aunt. Uncle says I'm not allowed to take a nap next to my cousin. Gets proven wrong. Anyways, this is a short one. Two decades ago when I was 10, I was in my grandfather's house. All my cousins were playing the new released console, the Sega Genesis. I wanted to play after a quick nap. I slept on a king size bed and my cousin slept on the other side. We were both male. My uncle, who we'll call MU for medical uncle, woke me up and screamed at me. This is prohibited, and boys are not allowed to sleep next to each other. I was confused, and replied, What the heck are you talking about? Since I just recently read scripture, and it said girls and boys are not allowed to sleep on the same bed, I replied, It's only girls and boys, not two boys. He was angry, and said, You are a stupid kid, you know nothing. I am your elder and go wake up and never do that again. I replied, screw off, you are wrong, the scripture says so. He replied, you are grounded and will not play with your cousins until you showed me the verse. The worst part is the bookshelves were near the TV and my cousins were playing in front of me. There were four book cabinets that had six shelves and a glass door. Most of the books were religious, though some were medical and computer related. Anyways, it took me more than three hours to find the verse. I was sobbing and I was angry at the same time. I pointed at the verse and shouted. Here, the verse says, boy and girl should not lay in bed together unless they are married. See, I was right. I threw the book on the ground and said, I'm calling my mum, I'm leaving. She told my other grandmother's driver from my mother's side to pick me up. 
To this day, I never spoke to him again. He is the most entitled parent who has many issues. In fact, all my uncles from my father's side are messed up. I don't know anything about like, the scripture or the verse or whatever, the religious stuff, but that guy sounds pretty ignorant. Uh, that doesn't sound right what he's trying to put across. Entitled dad is my dad and my little sis shuts him up. The cast. ED is my dad, LS is my little sis or my dad's favorite, me, me and M manager. Context. Entitled dad has no job. My mom is the only breadwinner in our family. Hence, she had to go to another country to work. My sister was eight to nine years old. I was 13. The story. It was a weekend and we wanted to eat dinner outside. We went to a fast food chain that offers unlimited rice if you paid for it beforehand on the counter and you get a differently colored plate so servers could distinguish if you could be given unlimited rice. My dad ordered for us as we looked for our seats. It was a weekend and it was dinner time, so it meant that the whole place was swarming cramped of families. Few minutes passed by and we received our orders. Two had white plates and one was brown. This is important later. My dad finishes up his rice and ordered a nearby server for a serving. He had the brown plate, so he was given the rice. I wanted rice too, but I had the white plate, so the server explained that I couldn't have the rice because white plates can only have a single serving of rice right from when it was served. I was fine with it. I was a bit on the chubbier side and thought that this could play into my advantage to lose a bit of weight, for health reasons. My dad, however, was not okay with this. I barely remember most of it, but what I do remember was that he argued with several of the servers and had the manager involved. Sir, it says here on your receipt that you only ordered for two meals with single rice and only one meal with unlimited rice. I don't care what you say. You are only a fast food worker. Serve my kid right now. At this point, my sister and I were panicking and telling him to stop. He only shushed us. In the end, after all his arguing with the manager, I was given another meal, this time with unlimited rice. My little sister and me to the manager, we are so sorry. It's okay, please enjoy your meal. I felt really bad. My dad kept on talking smack about the service and the staff to me and my little sister, to which my sister replied, at least they have jobs. My dad shut up. When we left the restaurant, I called my mum about the incident. My dad called me a liar and a tattletale. Glad thing mum chewed his butt halfway around the world. That's like an r slash murdered by words, but only a seven year old could say that. When I was 14, my stepdad yelled at me for using a big word. This is kind of funny, really. My stepdad always loves to be the smartest person in the room. When somebody even appears smarter than him, he gets angry. We were watching a TV show and two episodes were together to make a longer episode. I simply said, I guess this is two episodes conjoined. Apparently, I only use words like that to make myself sound smarter and try to make people feel stupid. I do enjoy making people feel stupid, but it's not like conjoined is such a difficult word. I learned it in sixth grade, and I feel like I should have learned it before that. Don't blame me because you don't understand a word. So this guy likes to be the smartest person in the room, but thinks conjoined is like this, this superior word that only very smart people can use. Yeah, I, I don't think he's the smartest person in the room. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.